lives are we supposed to start the podcast are we ready 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 okay oh that sucked it did suck one two three that's all right i mean it's just not my day it's not i mean that's really bad don't it's, you have court later yes i mean it's ominous that i can't clap i know that's kind of my special skill are you going to trot down to the courthouse? I'm going to trot down to the courthouse after this. In front of a judge? Yes. So, listener, you know, Pumps is a divorce attorney. So when she's not doing this podcast, she's trolling around the courthouse. Right. With the sag and dragons, which I have to say. Do they look extra big? Oh, my God. The rack on you today. I know. It's awful. It's gigantic. I would give anything for like a flat chest like an a well you know you can go to a plastic surgeon i know i know i know i need to do that yeah yeah that needs to go up on my list well what have you had it with this week besides your oversized double d sag and dragons i have had it with people that back their car in to parking places <laughs> i know it's just like a nothing deal but if you're behind them it takes forever and i'm like you're not fucking Batman. I mean, what are you doing that you have to get out of this spot so fast? And the biggest offender in the backed in parking place is my youngest. He backs into our garage. I'm like, what are you doing? He backs into the garage? Yes, like a weirdo. So it's interesting that you bring this up because, and everybody spare me the fucking eye rolls. Okay. But I play pickleball every day. <laughs> As everybody painfully is, is aware. Painfully aware of your pickleball. Painfully aware. But there's a lot of ass and nose out parkers at pickleball. Why? I have no idea. There's a lot of Ford F 150s and Ford F 150s in particular, it's an ass in nose out. A couple of girls that I play with do ass in nose out. And I asked one of them, why do you do that? And she was just like, because I like whipping my car around. <laughs> and so I just, I didn't inquire much further about the psychology behind the ass in nose out, but it is rather fascinating because there is no way I'm going to ass in nose out my car. No, never. And it's, I, I'm a terrible reverser. Like every wreck that's been my fault has been in reverse. So I just spare the other patrons in a parking lot. Right. Unlike my neighbors, that's a whole different story. Right. But I'm like, seriously, are you going to get arrested? Are you on the run? Like, why do you have to do this? And I've asked people and they're like, well, I can get out faster. I'm like, but it takes you longer to get in. So you split the difference. I mean, it's the exact same. And you look like a bozo. Ass in, nose out. Richard, do you, how do you park? Are you ass in, nose out or nose in, ass out? Nope. I'm just like you guys. Just a normal. Normal. Park straight for it and back up. Kylie, how do you park? I park normal, like a normal person. Nose in, ass out. Yeah. Right. I can't imagine backing into a spot. The ass in, nose out. I mean, I need, I, I wonder what the psychology is behind it. I know. It's interesting because I'm just seeing it more and more. I wonder if these people think like, it's like an early bird catches the worm type mindset. Like, I'm going to go ahead and take the extra time on the front end of this. So on the back end, I don't have as much time. I get that. Like if you're at a football game with 100,000 people or like a basketball game with 20,000 people. But when you're just at Upper Crest for pizza on a Wednesday night, there's really no reason for it. And I noticed three cards there. Ass in. I'm going to go with the people that do this ass in, nose out at Pickleball are ready to get the fuck out of there after the ass pounding that I just handed them on the court. <laughs> that's that's probably exactly why they're scared. That's what I'm going to go with. Right. Even though I'm an average pickleball player at best, I'm going to tell myself right. that's why they're doing they're it. They're licking their wounds and having to limp to They've their got, car. I mean, it, they have got to just get out ASAP. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, have I told you about my neighbor? No. Okay. So my driveway backs I mean, it's like a street thing. It's not, it doesn't go into my neighbor's driveway. My across the street neighbors have parked their car exactly where my car goes out. And I've hit that car three times. Wait, wait, wait. They park on the street to where they're in the street. 
but blocking your driveway. Well, I mean, they're across from uh, across the street from my driveway, but on the street. If you hit a parked car, that's 1,000% your fault. I, according Period. to the insurance c- company, you are correct. I agree with the insurance company. If you hit a parked car, that's 1,000% your fault. Right. But I'm like, why are you parked at the end of my driveway, Here's basically? The deal. Here's the deal. Back in the day when we learned how to drive, there was no camera. Now right. you have both your eyes. I actually have three things. It's a trifecta of prevention. Right. I know. You've got your eyes, you have the rear view mirror, and then you have the camera. And the beep. So it's a four. It's a four. four. Right. So if your ass is hitting parked things, that's 1,000% your fault. I'm not saying that your neighbors aren't assholes because I'm sure they are. Typically neighbors are. But that's 1,000% no, your fault. I know it's my fault, but it was funny because the first time they sent it into the insurance and the insurance called me and I was like, I know this is going to go against me and it's my fault, but it's bullshit that they parked like their car there. So then the next two times I hit it, they didn't turn it into the insurance, but they haven't parked I've there heard enough. <laughs> I've heard enough. The verdict is in. You're the idiot, asshole, period. No doubt End about story. it. story. It's time to move on to me. Right. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of idiot asshole, <laughs> Jennifer, what have you had it with? <laughs> I, in the spring of 2023, have had it with COVID because currently oh, yeah. Josh has COVID and Roman has COVID. And here's the deal. I am more of a nurse ratchet. Yes, you're a terrible person to have around when you're sick. Than I am a nurse nightingale. Yeah, you're the worst. I am pretty bad. I just don't think there's anything worse than a sick husband. I could not agree more. Multiply that by the fact that Josh Welch is the most compulsive person on the planet. Right. Yesterday, so he tested positive for COVID on Sunday. Okay. Okay. The next day, he took three at-home COVID tests. Three. (laughs) Why? All positive. The day after that, he took two at-home COVID tests, both positive, went to the dock in the box for confirmation, again positive. What is wrong with him? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yesterday, two at-home COVID tests, positive, and then went to the clinic and another positive test. It is just like this attic brain. And it's like, if there's one COVID test, 2,500 COVID tests are better. It is <laughs> unbelievable. Maybe he just likes them sticking that shit up his nose. So I FaceTime Dylan, our oldest son that's at Syracuse, and I tell him about it. His response is exactly like yours. Why is he so insane? It's nuts. Well, then Roman's got COVID. Upstairs, right. who is the as tough as nails? And delightful. All the time. I can't see Roman right now because I don't want COVID. So I miss him. So I FaceTime him last night. I'm like, Roman, since you test positive for COVID the first time, have you taken any further COVID tests? He's like, no, why would I until my symptoms are gone? Right. I'm like, your dad has taken three to four COVID tests each day. And his response is, why? And I'm like, I can't answer these questions. There's no rational explanation to irrational behavior. So this morning I get up. And I go into the kitchen island, and there is a COVID test sitting there. No. That is negative. Oh, so he's out of the... So I looked over at him, and I said, oh, is this your test from this morning? He goes, yep, it's negative. I was like, you still need to wear a mask around me. Right. But I will say, I did think it was funny when I when you called to tell me that Josh had COVID. And I go, well, where are you putting him? And he, you go, well, he just can't be in the bedroom. I mean, I can't give up my bedroom. <laughs> I cannot give up my bedroom. How's Josh as a sick husband? I would think terrible. It's but I guess just, since you can't be around him, it's better. Nobody wants to be around me. So right. he follows me around but st- with a mask on, and he stays like 12 to 15 feet away. What are you doing? Oh, my God. That's the worst sick husband question on the planet. And I'm like, I'm about to pee. And, and it's Ugh. just, it's just, and he's lonely. And I remember when I had right. COVID and I was in quarantine, I was lonely. I came around the back and saw you through the glass door. But I found comfort in Netflix like a normal person. Right. You know, I didn't try to find comfort in somebody that was COVID negative. Yeah. I'm surprised he had time to follow you around with all his COVID tests he was taking. Well, oh my God. Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. Oh yes. I'm Angie. She is the star of our show. <laughs> You are so ridiculous. I am a supporting member. I am Jennifer. Kylie is here today. She's our producer. And Richard. Okay, Pumps, today we are in for a treat. Our guest is Olympic medalist Adam Rippon. He's a figure skater. He is 
the self-proclaimed America's sweetheart. I love him. Which I think you should totally start proclaiming that as well. <laughs> no, because I can't bring Florida. What about the hot one? The self-proclaimed hot one. <laughs> but I didn't proclaim that. And he is the host of Normalize This podcast. Without further ado, let's say hello to Adam Rippon. Hello, Adam. I'm I'm so excited to be here. I'm very looking forward to it. Well, good, because I want you to know that this is a place where we just do nothing but trash talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to get okay. shit off our chest with you, Adam. That's the goal of this because mm -hmm. we oppose toxic positivity <laughs> in all of its forms. You know, I do too. I'm, I, I'm like medically allergic to it. So <laughs> this is. You're in the right spot. Yeah. So I want to talk about in 2018, you were in the Olympics. And you That's got a, true. And you got a medal, right? Mm hmm What what medal did you get? I got a bronze medal. See, here at I've Had It Podcast, we would call that hashtag almost. Mm. <laughs> You're a I mean, terrible host. It's that shimmer. Is, <laughs> no, that's what my um mom calls it. No. I'm oh no. No, um, no. Honestly, that's amazing. <laughs> I will tell you my favorite things in the Olympics are ice figure skating, skating, figure skating and gymnastics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I think that's because you have good taste. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those are my favorite. When I was growing up, figure skating was my favorite and I loved gymnastics. It's because I, I it's because I trust you that I now know that like, okay, I'm in a safe, I'm in a safe place. <laughs> I'm in a safe space. <laughs> yes. Let me ask you, I have to ask you just first, right out of the gates, what have you had it with lately? Right now, off the top of my head, on social media, I've really had it with like the tiny microphone. <laughs> oh, we're you know totally offended. Yeah, we have them. We own them and we are offenders yes. of that. <laughs> hey, but listen, we we are hypocritical had it. So, right. I mean, I've had it. Okay. Now that you bring it up, I've had it with those two. Right. I'm still going to continue to use it because it makes right. our, our reels sound good. But let's let's rag on them. Okay. I want to go in because I think like at first, this isn't directly like this isn't a personal attack at you. When I get there, I'll let you know. Okay, okay. So when, great. So, okay. For, I, and first of all, I love you. So <laughs> we love that's, you. Okay, great. We're on the same page. Now, tiny microphone. Uh, no, they make them real size and they're not so <laughs> large that like we can't be using real size microphone. <laughs> I have a problem here. You're Vogue, right? Let's say that we're Vogue. We are Vogue magazine. Okay. We go to a red carpet and we have a Vogue tiny microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, that actually makes me feel sick to my stomach. <laughs> it makes me want to get COVID tested. I don't like that. You're Vogue. So right. don't use tiny microphone. Use real microphone that you own. Right. So I'm kind of done with tiny microphone. <laughs> I, I'm totally in. Kylie, immediately order us new, bigger size microphones immediately. It's not. So wait, they make tiny microphones for your shirt, like right, a lavalier right. mic, right? Right, right. <laughs> I'm not being fooled by changing the shape of a lavalier into a microphone for an American doll. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's still a lavalier mic, right. but it's for a mouse. Right. I don't want that. I want to speak into a human sized platform. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you think mm -hmm. this is somewhat Freudian that maybe you're just kind of like size matters kind of dude? I mean, it could be that um, because, you know, trauma really echoes kind of right back at the person <laughs> spewing it. Um, it could be that. And that's kind of a conversation that I'm going to have with myself right. after this. Right. But in the current moment, I'm thinking... It's just, it's, I don't like, this is what I don't like in front of my face, this pinch. Yes. Yes. It because that's what it is. Right. I don't, I don't know what that is. That could be a weapon. <laughs> it really is a micro, micro, phone. micro phone. <laughs> yes. okay. And I agree. Size does matter. We're, yeah. We're big size girls over here. We like a lot of size. We need to get bigger microphones. I cannot thank you enough for bringing this to our attention. Right. We are going to correct it. We've been so dorky until now. We're going to post our new jumbo size microphones and dedicate the post to you. To you. I would, I would really like that. That would make <laughs> me feel really, it would make me feel that like if I've done anything on this earth. Yeah. Right. 
I've done that. I it saved us. Yes, because I'm I'm all about like, you know, we kind of fucked up. We're going to fix it. Right. We're going to about we fix fucked it. around. Adam Wait. told it. I mean, like, we're going to fix it. I don't feel like you fucked up. And I want you to know that. Like, I don't feel like you fucked up. I think that you got swept up in the emotions of <laughs> seeing people with tiny microphones. Because I'll tell you, for the first few times I saw it, I went, oh, that's cute. And then I also saw yeah did i look it up because maybe i was thinking about getting one yeah i went on amazon and went oh it's five dollars right right so it's so cute. cute it's five dollars and and people are using them i like it and then i just keep su i kept seeing this right in in, in a face and i went i want to see this in a face. i want to <laughs> see that in a face See, I'm telling you, I think there's some um, Freudian sexual undertones in this argument, but we will mm. save that for another podcast because I want to tell you one of the biggest I've had it that I think has ever manifested. See, what we try to do on this podcast is prevent bad things and homicide. <laughs> okay, that th that's the goal. And classically, homicide is not categorized as bad. Right. right. <laughs> so anyway, we grew up. So when in 1994, I was 20, mm -hmm. Pumps was significantly older, but that's neither here 24, nor there. 24, it wasn't that old. And that is when Tanya Harding had had it with Nancy mm -hmm. Kerrigan. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that is like total, I mean, she had had it with Nancy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. had it. And then they made the movie later. So people younger than us kind of know about this. But what I want to know is the ghost of the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, does that still kind of permeate through the figure skating world? I mean, are you always kind of like when you leave the rink, are you like, who's that over there? <laughs> Am I going to get my knees bashed in? Does that does that ghost kind of haunt you? So um, there's like little things like I don't think anybody thinks that they're going to get attacked. At least I didn't. Um, which is maybe why I'm like so traumatic about the size of things or it's like, why wasn't, why wasn't I attacked? Um, but there is definitely this like, so in the skating world, like Tanya Harding is like the boogeyman. Like oh, I can you imagine. don't, you do not talk about her. You do not mention her. Like they only talk about like the first time she landed a triple axle. Like right. we talk about that and then like, that's it. We don't ever bring her up. And um, after the, the, the Olympics I competed in, she competed on Dancing with the Stars with me. Which you won. Yes, I did. I did win. And I actually didn't get bashed in the knees <laughs> by Tanya Harding, which was again, why not me? So I, <laughs> it was... You know, I'm holding the trophy and I'm going, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel complete. When you're on Dancing with the Stars, they own this big like studio space or like dance studio space. And so you can kind of go into the studios like when you're like training and other couples will be there. And I remember somebody was like, oh, Tanya's in like that room. And I'm like, like starting to like fully sweat because it's like I've never I'm going to right now I'm going to meet. Tanya Harding like I right. can't believe this so out walks this like trailer trash <laughs> I, I just, like smokers teeth leopard like giant leopard print purse oh. holding woman and she just walks out and she's like oh my god I saw you on TV <laughs> to me and yeah. I'm like I've seen you on TV <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and she was honestly, I mean, she's just she unfortunately reminded me of, of a lot of people that like grew up around me. Right. Right. I'm from Pennsylvania. <laughs> we had a lot of knee bashers over there. Right. <laughs> I think that that is the one thing when I think about figure skating and having it like Tanya had had it had it up to her. Eyeballs oh, yeah. With Nancy. See, I saw that movie, I, Tanya, and it made me have a whole different perspective of her. Like, I felt really sorry for her because she had the abusive mother, the abusive boyfriend. I think Who that hasn't. That's my thing, Adam. <laughs> that is my thing. Cry me a river. You do not have your boyfriend no, hire a hitman to go bash in Nancy but I don't Kerrigan's think she knew. knees. She fucking knew. She yes. fucking knew. She fucking knew. You are so gullible. It's Wait, maddening. this is what I, this is what I believe. I've had it with her. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, this is what I believe. I believe that like her husband and their like bag of goonies, they I believe that they were like, we're going to kill Nancy Kerrigan because this is how <laughs> she's going to win. And I completely believe that Tanya was like, because she's she, I, listen, I can tell you as somebody who's from Scranton, Pennsylvania, what it's like to be white trash, because I know people who live right. in trailers. Right. Right. And, and they love that. And right, I love right. that for them. Right. right. That being said, <laughs> I know that when Tanya heard, oh, we're going to kill her. She's probably in her mind. She's going, oh, my God. Well, we'll scare her, but we're not going to kill her. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's a huge difference. Because exactly. that's reasonable. That's right. reasonable. I think she had heard everything and was like, you know, they're not they're not going to do that. And right. never actually thought it was serious. But I think she knew but didn't know that they were being serious. Right. Yeah. Right. Pumps. I mean, I did not walk away from the movie with like loads of empathy towards Tanya. See, I did. I had but a lot you of empathy. Are, you are, look at your picker. I know. I'm Look gullible. at your track record. I know. I'm gullible. A lot of people have shitty parents and then they do not go I bash know. in ice skaters' knees. I know. Okay? I'm not defending it. I'm just saying I did have empathy for her. Okay. Yeah. She's had it with me. Totally had it with her, which brings me to a subject I really want to drag out and beat, Adam, with mm -hmm. you. And it yeah. is the subject of inspirational quotes. Okay. First of all, how do you feel about inspirational quotes? I feel bad about them. <laughs> I do too. They really... Irk really, me. They, me too. It's this toxic positivity. And I'm going to read some inspirational quotes to you all, and we're going to get feedback, Okay. Uh, most inspirational quotes are just English words jumbled together in a poetic manner. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Here's one right here. The worst okay. part of being strong is that no one asks no. if you're okay. <laughs> and here's what I want to no. say. The best part about being strong is, you, is that nobody asks me if I'm okay right. because I don't want to have unnecessary conversations. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to give off the don't fuck with me vibes because then I don't have to have mindless chit chat with people that I don't want to have chit chat with. Right. And, you know, I also believe that like a quote like that really appeases to someone who's not strong at all. Correct. Who thinks they are strong going. Right. Nobody asks me if I'm OK. No, that's because they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because you're not strong. Right. It's because they don't care. And it's probably because you run around talking about it 24 seven and everybody's sick of hearing about it. Right. You're probably telling people that you're not strong and <laughs> they're not asking about it. So there you go. Let it go. OK, how about this one, you guys? That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Yeah, I've heard that one forever. Here's the problem with this, you guys. Heart right. disease. Right. High blood Losing pressure. a limb. <laughs> right. That's actually going to make you weaker. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, this is just patently false propaganda. Fal it's propaganda. Mm. False Propaganda. You know, Adam, people talk about the gay agenda, which I support, mm -hmm. by the way. Thank um, you. You're welcome. But I think that there is a, a toxic positivity agenda mm -hmm. and they're circulating these quotes out there to people and people fall prey to this. Wait, but on a on a real serious note, I told that's exactly whenever I hear that quote, I hate that's my least favorite positive quote because there there are so many things that are like bad for you that they don't kill you, but they like slowly just they are not good for you. Right. Death by a thousand cuts. Yes. yes. OK, so what about this is my I mean, this one gets me wound up like a cheap clock. OK, and I'm just going to okay. tell you and it's overused. You can barely go one day without hearing it. Oh. Wound up like a cheap clock. That's right. Tick, 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 tick. I'm writing it down. I'm stealing it. <laughs> OK, it is. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> that mm. does drive you it bananas. It sends me into orbit. I mean, to horrible. Like, look at Tanya Harding. Right. What was the reason for her mom being crazy with the bird on the shoulder? Right. There's right. no good reason for that. And look at how it turned out. Right. She beat up. She had the goons beat up the pretty ice skater. <laughs> right. But when I hear people say everything happens for a reason, it's just mm -hmm. like, no, it fucking doesn't. Sometimes, a, I mean, there's 
bad shit is ubiquitous and it happens all the time. And bad things happen to really good people that try to do mm-hmm. the right thing. And it's just this, you know, it's dumb luck if, right. if everything goes is, your way yeah. or not. And so the everything happens for a reason movement. It just, it absolutely irks me. I mean, yeah, just, well, it is a movement for yeah. that. Sure. Um, I believe I, I completely agree with you because I think that when things happen, I don't like that. Oh, it all happens for a reason. I think that like whatever situation you find yourself in, you can make the most of it. Right. Um, right. Or you can f- try to find some sort of silver lining. Right. Um, But I don't think everything happens for this, like for a reason that uh, that makes also makes me feel like I wasn't in charge of anything. Right. When I really like to be in charge. <laughs> Why would you take the, my only joy away of right. being in charge? And it's it's not just being in charge, it's being the boss of you. Yeah. You know, because yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm kind of bossy by nature and I love to no. be bossy. Oh, fuck off, pumps. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't like that one. How do you feel about yak mouths? Um, unfortunately, I feel like I, I attract them <laughs> um, and I, I get stuck. And the in my and the reason I get stuck is I keep adding to the conversation See, that I wish would end. I kind of do that too, Adam. This one, and I'm like, I don't want to be here. And I'm like, oh my god, you don't set like what happened next? I don't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> An evil thing. spirit takes over. Yes, this yes. is what I call feeding a stray cat. You start feeding those cats, and then they just keep coming back. This one will go off. I mean, for hours about how much she hates yak mouse. And then Mm. we get into a situation where a yak mouth is present. I immediately start shutting down. I'm sending nonverbal cues that I need for this person. But you come off rude. I do not. You do come off rude. Yes, you do. You come off like you want to French kiss them. Well, and then I'm you immediately bash them I'm behind just their back. Oh, you, that is this. <laughs> but it's like, it's the open energy versus the closed energy, right? Like, right. we see each other because I'm not putting it out there. But there's something about me where a stranger can look me in the eyes and goes, I should tell them about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I've said I that don't for know years. What like, it is. I have the face that says, please tell me your life story. <laughs> yeah. I would much rather, if I'm bugging somebody, them send me nonverbal cues so I can not annoy them than somebody feign interest. I like authenticity. I don't want anybody to feign interest. And I wouldn't consider it rude at all. But I'm mm, super I, thick skinned. I um, would rather the feigned interest. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'll deal with the consequences when I go home. But right. Oh, my God. I would rather the feigned interest. Okay, well, do you want to hear what my favorite quote is? Let's hear it. You can't fix stupid. I mean, I just think that's words to live by. You just have to ignore stupid people because um, you can't fix stupid. I think that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Mm-hmm. There are just some people that are so... You just have to write them off. Breathtakingly stupid. And, you know, I feel like sometimes I, I'm totally with you on this. Sometimes I feel conflicted because it's like, should I try to educate this person? But they don't want to be educated. Right. They don't. They don't. I used to want to try to educate them. And I used to mm-hmm. f- try to feed the stray cat. But all it does is get you all worked up. And yeah. there is comfort in knowing that you have read the fact. And then you've got, you know, Dan over on Facebook that mm-hmm. thinks he's got, you know, crack the case. It's, it's just, always a Dan. Yes. <laughs> and you just cannot argue with Dan. The people who are so susceptible to like misinformation is that that terrifies me yeah. the most. Not us. I would never I would never believe anything that was not true ever. <laughs> <laughs> she is the most gullible person. I probably person. would. Ever. I am pretty gullible. I mean, absolutely gullible. I'm always skeptical, but I'm open to believing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm I'm very yeah. skeptical, but I like, I mean, like UFOs, I'm skeptical, but I want to believe, you know, like, mm-hmm. but I require pretty hardcore evidence to believe an extraordinary claim. Okay. I don't. No, I <laughs> think I just need, I think I need one really kind of good YouTube video and I'm I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> I love kind of it. the same, I have to say. Okay, we have just made up a new game and we okay. are rolling this out for the first time on our podcast and it's a game called Had It 
or hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. So, had it or hit it? Mm hmm. Pedro Pascal. Hit it. For sure. I would hit it. Yeah. I would totally hit yeah. it. Yeah. He's cute. Inspirational quotes. Oh, had it. Had it. Totally had it. Oversized beverages. Uh, I had it. I just like, can we just <laughs> uh, drink normal? Yes. Oh yes. my yes. God. Yes. Yes. Like yes. I've had it. Ganging up on me. No, she carries these Stanley cups too at a Where time. Where are you going with I mean, that? It's a gallon everywhere. of water. It's ridiculous. Everywhere. It just, it it disgusts me it to really the core irritates her. of my being. And it's not one. She has to have two. She has one and then a backup. Everywhere we go, she bogarts all the cup holders. Right. Everything is centered around her having a beverage. You can't enjoy one fucking thing without the <laughs> beverage coming into it. And then this reusable straw and all the mangy lipstick stains on it and the iced tea stains on it. I've had it. <laughs> okay. I think people who wield water bottles with them at all times are the most powerful kind of person because I don't have that kind of inner strength to carry around water. <laughs> I don't. And I'm never going to acquire it. What is in both of these Stanley 65 ounce <laughs> containers? What's in them? I just I'm dying sweet to know. Tea. Is it just sweet tea? Sweet tea. Yep. Not water. I mean, I have one for my workout class, I take with water, but everything else is sweet tea. What so you're having 120 ounces of sweet tea. Adam, that's... Are you filling I, them from... Oh, yes, I'm filling tank? them. She has it's more than that. Four or five times a day. Four to five Stanley cups of sweet tea per day. Yeah. But it's stevia. It's not Splenda anymore. It doesn't. Oh, it's not the stevia I'm worried about. <laughs> it's your kidneys. <laughs> no shit. See? Yeah. I'm telling you. I know. That's a lot of tea. I know. For one woman. Right. It is. It is a problem. <laughs> it is a huge problem. Okay. Had it or hit it? Pickleball. Uh, I want, I, okay. I've had that I haven't done it because I want to do it. I feel like it would be fun. And then I think once I've done it once, I'm going to have it. Okay. I'm going to be done with it. <laughs> it's small tennis. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. She's I love a it. Do you like about it? it. You I, love it. Oh my I God. Love you it. asked the wrong question. I love Adam. it. I love it. Yeah. I just, there's like a, there's a place to play pickleball near my house. And I, I'm like, oh, I should go. Cause it looks like it would be so much fun. I and you love that, it. I, I think you would love it. And I think with your athleticism, you would, you know, probably be great. Naturally at it. adapt to it very quickly. Okay. Now you're you're really selling me on pickleball. Here's the thing with pickleball. I think it's fun. Like for a, just a novice person, it's like a great family activity, a good couple's date, something like that. But you just take it to the Olympic level I'm every an day. I'm every an day. good. Yeah. I'm an good. athlete. She's in training. I'm an athlete. And you know what he talks about? You know what he does when he was in the Olympics? I may not be in the Olympics, but every fucking day. I have a match at Chicken and Pickle in Oklahoma <laughs> City, and that match is mm -hmm. every bit as important to me as his Olympic training. So fuck it's you. all relative. That's right. It's all, all relative. relative. Moving along, um, had it or hit it? Baby showers. Oh, ha had it. Shower <laughs> your own baby. <laughs> Gender reveal parties. Had it. No. Okay. Had it. Gender is so dead. It's <laughs> kind of true. It's true. <laughs> It is yeah. totally true. Gender. Yeah, no, it's just like it's so dead. That's right. So I have the a lines are blurred. I have a client and she just had a baby. And yes. instead of sending the baby a gift, I sent her a gift because I remember when I was pregnant and had my kids. My kids got all these gifts. Well, they don't fucking remember because right. they're infants. They don't remember mm. receiving the gifts. But one friend bought me a gift just for me. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. It was a great pair of pajamas. So now I am not buying any more baby gifts. I'm only going to buy the mother gifts. I think that's a great idea. The baby does really like a great that. idea. And here's here's the thing. This baby's not done anything in their life yet to no. warrant all these gifts. And Absolutely they not. They haven't gone to the Olympics and won medals. That's right. You know? Or Dancing with the Stars. Or Dancing with the Stars. That's no, exactly even right. if it was just the almost medal, they have not, <laughs> they haven't gotten that. Hashtag so almost. 
Yeah, almost. <laughs> she is so hateful. <laughs> okay, had it or hit it? Bronze medals. Hit it. Had it. <laughs> <laughs> Get better. Get better. That's what I have to say. Bronze <laughs> medals are done. Cool. Get better. <laughs> okay. Um, had it or hit it? Bangs. Had it. I'm done. <laughs> yep. Okay. Why is some hair shorter? I don't know. <laughs> But y'all, I'm getting ready to have to get bangs when I'm 60. I don't think you can wear no bangs when you're 60. I mean, I have seven years. What? Who, what? 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 Where'd you get this? But don't you just think a 60-year-old has to have bangs? You, oh my God. What 60-year-old has, I can't even think of one. What are you talking I just about? I feel like that's kind of when you're getting- Are you your- okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having an aneurysm. No, but you don't, you think you can wear no bangs your whole life until they put you in the ground? Yes. I mean, what do you think the bangs are protecting you from? At 60, I, I osteoporosis? <laughs> exactly. I mean, what, what, what did you just, just make this up on the fly? No, I've thought that before. Like, I've only got probably like seven more years of decent hair where I can have longer hair. I just assume when I get older, I'll have to do short, you know, short hair. You know what really irks me about you? It's just how easily you cave to aging. <laughs> I get Botox oh. and filler and all that. I know, but it's always just like, I'm of this age. And I see, like, I still feel young. And like, I don't, I wouldn't, I still, I think 60 is fairly young. Like you can yeah. still, I have women that kick my ass on the pickleball court that are 60 right, or over. If you see a And 60, they don't have bangs and they don't act like old ladies. Okay. And they never would get them. <laughs> exactly. So what you're saying is I don't have to get I, a mom here. Get what a I'm saying haircut. is when you no. turn 60, this friendship is over as is the podcast. <laughs> If I have bangs. <laughs> Wait, this is the thing. This is what I have. I, I need to have like a moment together with you. Wh- why? Why? I guess I just don't want to be one of those women that's like, looks trying to be too young. You know how you see those women and you're like, oh my God, she's too old. So to you're going to go full dork to having bangs? I just thought that 60 was the cutoff. I really did in my mind. No. No. Okay. So I can still have. Long, I mean, look at hair. Jane Fonda. She does. does she have no, bangs? She's fabulous. No, she does not have bangs. I think she does have bangs. She I mean, does, does Jamie? I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis kind but of like shorts, her whole the hair same is a bang. All over. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Same length all over, which was Adam's yeah. criteria. Jodie Foster, amazing. No bangs. Right. Okay. All right. Uh huh. I've got seven years to contemplate it. Yeah. Okay. I think like if you functionally need them, like if the hair is just breaking off at bang length, right. I think that's the universe going, it's time. <laughs> but until then, I think that you could be in charge of your own length. Okay. Okay. Um, had it or hit it, Gwyneth Paltrow. Well, she hit that guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Ha- I've had it with the goop. I'm hitting the court case. <laughs> I'm with you 10,000% on that. I'm over goop enough. It's just too much. But the court case and her outfits and the internet memes that are coming out about it. And then like, did you see the opposing counsel when they interrogated her, how starstruck she was? That shit is like tap the veins. It's great content. I had to like dig in and, and find out. I'm like, is this the opposing counsel? Yes, or is like she bad. being... Oh, it's horrible. horrible. It's so bad. She's like, I bet, well, I bet your ski off. It was pretty fabulous. I bet you're a good tipper. I mean, this has to be a, like a Netflix series. Of, totally. Like, this specific court. This is, if that was the lawyer that I hired, Furious. it'd be a nightmare situation. Nightmare situation. No, I told Jennifer, she has got the biggest bar complaint coming in the history of the world if they lose this case. Because she's <laughs> oh, going to be it's like, crazy. you basically couldn't quit complimenting her. Oh yeah, that I showed I showed that video to Pumps yesterday. But I mean, the glasses Gwyneth is, Gwyneth is wearing, and, and she's so pretty. She no, can everything. Pull this those is off. It's incredible PR because like the goop of it all is like <laughs> well because she's like Gwyneth Paltrow at this moment in time is like meat off the bone. Like the meat is falling off the bone. Right, and it's like. She w- did something that was like uh, was all over the place online. She did a podcast and she was like, I intermittent fast. And then for like lunch, I'll have bone broth. And then for dinner, I'll have um, a strictly paleo. Right. So basically, she's like, I'm having hot water and carrots. <laughs> and, and she's like, well, I'm currently hooked up to an IV. Like she's just, like, it's like cuckoo nuts. And I'm like, OK, it's it's over. And then she goes to court and I go, 
all right, maybe I do need a few <laughs> carrots and some bone broth because yeah. this is really, really good. No, it has been great, great content. I have loved it. I'm a hundred, I've had it with the goop, would totally hit courtroom Gwyneth is yeah. five stars. Yeah. 100%. I did hear an interview, I think just today, that she puts like hot ozone air up her ass. Oh, she does all kinds of shit to her vagine and her ass. Yeah, that that her pussy has taken a beating. A bu- <laughs> <laughs> She's the one who's beating it. Right. Like that's that's what's so goopy about it. It's like insane. It's insane. Every other day, she's like, "There's something up some orifice," and and it's never her mouth. Like that. <laughs> she's never eating. Never eating. Oh, it's great shit. Well. Adam, you're so fun. This has been so fun. I've absolutely loved meeting you, even though it's a hashtag almost. This friendship is a yeah. hashtag for real. <laughs> this is a for real. I would come back anytime. I love it. Well, we definitely want you to. Definitely. And so, listener, you can find Adam. What's your Instagram? Um, it's at a rip. On Instagram, A D A R I P P. Oh, that mm, is a, a 10 out of 10 Instagram name. Yeah. See, he's clever. He is sharp as a tack listener. That's right. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you guys. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Like, I want him to come over to my house and be a house guest forever. Oh, he's great. He's so fun. And then just the, I mean, when you think about like Olympic training, and the intensity it's unbelievable that goes into that it's just incredible how disciplined he must be totally disciplined i mean that's a level of discipline i can't even wrap my head around and i'm a pretty disciplined person yeah, in you my are. diet and exercise and sleep and me time the whole nine but that is a level of discipline that is like goals for me Right. I mean, very, well, I mean, very few people can go to the Olympics. So, right. But very few people are that disciplined. And I just want full credit that I didn't ask him how much sex was going on in the Olympic Village, which I was dying to. But you said everybody asked him that. You can't ask him that. I think it's been covered. I think I know, everybody knows saying. everybody fucks everybody at the Olympic Village. I didn't think it was a hot take. I know, but I, I thought the Nancy Kerrigan shit was way hotter. No, I know, but I'm just saying, the are you Tanya so proud Harding. of me that I didn't do it? This, see, this is the problem. That's that's the toxic positivity <laughs> that's culture. The minimum. You want me to be proud of you that we both agreed you wouldn't <laughs> ask him about the fucking at the Olympic Village, and now you want a trophy when you didn't do it. Yeah, but I have done it on other podcasts. Slipped in something. You always do. You're but like, I didn't today. You're like, she's going to be so mad at me. I just have to ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do that today. I'm growing. Hi, Kylie Richard, are you proud of pumps today? <laughs> If you say yes, I swear to God. So proud. So proud, Kylie says. Richard? Richard. I'm proud of you, Pumps. Thank you, Aww. Richard. Sorry. And at Pumps, it's just hard not to love you. Oh. Unless you. you get bangs. Well, Unless yeah, I didn't. That I'm was out. the biggest. I just thought that that was a thing. Where, where, where did you read that? At the softball magazine? No. <laughs> No, I wonder if it's because my mom has short hair when she got older. But I guess she always had short hair. But this is not somebody who is like a fashion person no a fashion forward person no. i love your mother but this fashion is not i mean it's not nowhere near any right but mine's not the greatest so. i just i i don't know where you got that in your head i think you need to quit caving to aging and quit making up made up rules about bangs yeah that's it is made up i don't know why I you completely that. made it up and then you're schlepping it out on the podcast <laughs> like that's some unspoken rule that everybody knows and it was news to adam and me and god only knows it's news to kylie and richard <laughs> listener listen up we've got to go but join us on patreon join us on youtube tiktok twitter um do you DMs? youtube's oh yeah send us a voice memo of what you've had it with to our I've had it podcast Instagram direct That's right. message. That's right. Keep going. And please join us on Patreon. And then we will see you next Tuesday or Thursday. Because cunt. All right. Bye, listener. Bye. Bye.